Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hope you're having an amazing day. Well, 2023 has had a stellar start if you're a PC gamer, with CES being an absolutely amazing event with tons of product announcements. But in my personal opinion, this is just going to be a preview of things to come over the next 12 months or so. For PC gamers, there's going to be a hell of a lot of exciting products which are going to be announced and no doubt leaked. But also, if you're a console gamer, I suspect this is going to be the year, especially in the latter part, that we're going to hear a lot more about the you know, mid-generation console refresh and so on and so on. With that said, in this particular video, I want to give you guys an update to RDNA 4, but we're going to start things out initially with Narve 32, as these next generation RDNA 3 parts are actually shaping up to be very, very cool. And we're going to get right into it after this message from the video's sponsor. If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by whokeys.com and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional as well as Home Keys. Yeah, and they also of course sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. Prior to get into the video haul, I just want to say I'm sorry for not being on camera yet again. I'm currently traveling back to my old place. As many of you know, I am currently in the process of moving. And you guys know what it's like when you're moving. You basically are just kind of screaming into the void and praying for it all to be over. The moving process is always a pain in the ass. I think it's one of those things where everyone tells themselves it's going to be smooth. It's going to be smooth. And then you come off the skateboard and you've got grazed knees no matter what. Anyway, let's start things out with N32, shall we? As many of you know, it is basically going to be a cut-down variant of N31. In many ways, it's very similar. So, for example, it still utilizes the GCD and MCD configuration that many of you have probably been aware of. But the major difference, of course, is that there are significant differences in the number of shaders and memory. So, um, for the N32 desktop SKU, we have the 7800 XT. These are the current naming schemes. They could honestly change, but this is going to feature 60 compute units, 16 gigabytes of memory. So that's on a 256-bit bus. As I'm sure you can gather, that is also going to mean there's going to be four MCDs. Then there's the 7800 this is going to feature 54 compute units and 16 gigabytes of memory. Again, a 256-bit bus. And then cutting things down, shaving it just a little more, we have the 7700 XT. This features 48 compute units, 12 gigabytes of memory on a 192-bit bus. So from what I can ascertain, that will, of course, cut down the MCD count. Now, N32, as well as N33, we've already seen N33, of course, officially confirmed, but N32 will also see mobile variants as well. I'm hearing that they are actually pretty impressive. There are some rumors I've heard that N31 will also be available on mobile, but I'm not too convinced on that, to be honest with you guys. Like, maybe... Uh, possibly with the refresh. Now, as for the performance of this, from what I understand, the 7800 XT isn't actually that far behind the 7900 XT. Uh, basically, the clocks actually go much higher, from what I can understand so far anyway, than N31. Now, I've actually heard from multiple people at this stage that uh, N31 did not reach the clocks that it was supposed to. I've heard, well, varying figures, but I've actually heard up to 3.3 to even 3.5 gigahertz was the original target. Whether that's true or not, it really doesn't matter at this point, of course. But what I can tell you is that N32 is going to be a very interesting part. It's definitely going to be, hopefully, a lot more affordable. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if the free MCD configuration, the 7700 XT, is actually a very good price indeed. One of the things that AMD allegedly are going to be doing with N33 for desktop is 
pricing it as cheap as humanly possible giving given excuse me the size of the monolithic die and the fact that it's only 128 bit bus in theory they should be able to produce these things for like two dollars fifty and uh you know you should be able to just buy it for the price of a pack of gum but with everything that's happening in the market at the moment who the hell knows we all know for example what the hell's been going on with the with the uh, 4070 ti but it's going to be very interesting to see what happens honestly with amd going forward in the graphics market uh things have been a little bit shaky with the launch of the you know 7900 series i think that they have been recovering pretty well i think they've done some really good things in terms of pr on how they've handled the cooler issues now from what i understand amd are actually working on a new driver which should improve the efficiency and performance quite considerably of the 7900 series so it's going to be very interesting to see what happens in terms of benchmarks obviously one issue that i think occurs quite frequently um in benchmark graphs for reviewers and i'm putting my you know i'm certainly guilty of this as well sometimes you know because as well you sometimes you don't get to keep the card so a lot of the times you can have like benchmark results which are old and obviously new you know new driver variants can really quite significantly change the performance landscape so it's going to be very interesting to see what happens with amd going forward especially with the supposed refresh of n31 which i'm still hearing is going to be happening and as for rdna4 i just want to give you guys a couple of small updates so first things first i'm almost positive at this point that there is no dedicated machine learning units on rdna4 so basically um, if you missed my previous video, I'll link it in the video description, but essentially it's still basically utilizing a similar technology to what we had previously, to my understanding. The difference is it is much more performant and it, of course, can still handle WMMA or Wave Matrix Multiply Accumulate, but this is version two. So it basically offers two times performance per CU. Um, so I've now heard from yet another source that this is true. Furthermore, um, I've been told that the GCX tiles should utilize N3, the IO tile should utilize N5, as well as the base tile, but MCDs will most likely still be using N6. Now, if you've gotten to this part of the video and you don't quite know what the heck a GCX is, I would encourage you to check out my previous video where I go a lot more in detail to the rumors that I've been fed for RDNA 4. Obviously, this is a small update concerning that last video, but I'm I'm going to go over briefly what i was told so um we still have mcds which basically act as both the memory controller and caches there is no real change there but the difference is that most likely um rdna4 will be using gddr7 memory the major difference comes in the fact that basically it's more stacked so it's a lot more advanced in terms of packaging so the gcd for nave 31 for example is a single um, well, it's basically a single chiplet, and obviously yeah, that houses things like the compute units, the ray tracing, all of the other stuff, which basically is for the compute side of things on the GPU, and also some of the cache and some of that, and some other bits and bobs. Whereas with Nave 41, 42, and 43, these are now separated into GCXs, with each GCX um, containing 48 compute units. So in the case of Nave uh, 41, it could have up to three GCXs. And obviously those GCXs will come together to form the single GCD. So essentially it's advanced packaging. Nave 42, to my understanding, has two GCXs. And Nave 43 has a single GCX. Again, I've gone into a lot more detail in a previous video. But I realized that if I hadn't covered that, this is going to raise some questions. So I just wanted to briefly mention it in this video. Now, interestingly, and I haven't been able to verify this with someone else yet, but I've also been told that essentially MI400, which of course is not necessarily something a lot of gamers would be interested in, this instead is going to be utilized for data center, is very similar in structure to RDNA4. The difference is, though, that rather than the MCDs being also um serving excuse me as controllers for gddr memory they basically will essentially control hbm3 and they will basically connect directly hbm using an interconnect 
So as you can imagine, this is going to be something that data centers really utilize, you know, high bandwidth memory, and AMD have utilized high bandwidth memory for a number of generations now. So it's not really surprising that uh, MI400 and its, uh, you know, and its uh, various successors and so on would also continue to do this as well. But I think that's just about it for this particular video. It's definitely been a lot shorter than many of my more recent videos. There are a couple of very interesting topics that I'd love to include in this particular video, but I'm just waiting for a couple of days where I can double source some interesting, uh, well, let's just say where I can verify a few bits and pieces. With that said though, um, take care of yourselves, have an amazing day, stay safe, bye for now.